Today's video is going to be about everything that I know when it comes to Mario Party Jamboree. Today's video will contain basically everything that I've talked about from the past five videos and have some things fixed and updated from what I had said or seen when they were edited and uploaded. So if you have seen any of the other videos, most of what was said there will be here, so just be warned about that. Now, this video will not contain anything that has been leaked. Even though I have talked about everything that we've officially seen from this game, I still want there to be things for me to be surprised about, and hopefully some things for me to be excited about as well. But with all of that out of the way, enjoy my final video before Mario Party Jamboree releases this Thursday. Before we get to see any of the boards, you get to see the character select, and there are 22 characters, with Pauline and Ninji being the unlockable characters. We also got our first look at the actual main circle, where we get to see some of the characters get ready to go into the hot balloon to go to the board select screen. After they've hopped into the balloon and selected their board, we do get to see a little bit of the board settings. Of course, they are in a different language, so we can only really tell what they are through translations. You get to see the amount of turns, you get to see how many bonus stars you want, you get to see the types of minigames, whether you want motion control minigames on or off, and of course, whether you want to have the minigame instructions on or off. At the beginning of everybody's turn, there is a different jingle per character. So Peach has her own, and Waluigi has his own, and everybody has their own. All right. All right. There are of course nine types of spaces in the game. You have your blue spaces, red spaces, event slash happening spaces, your lucky spaces, which seem to be similar to how they work in superstars, maybe a little less powerful, unlucky spaces, which seem to be similar to maybe just a tiny bit more powerful to Super Mario Party. You have your item spaces, which will give you a wheel, like how it was in Super, and then you'll have a chance to either just get an item or play an item minigame. You have your versus spaces, which seem to be similar to superstars, it doesn't seem to have its own set of mini games, and then when you play it, it seems that it will disappear. You have your Bowser spaces, which again, similar to how they are in Superstars, except this time there probably won't be any Bowser mini games. You don't really see any there, and the only way that I feel like they would do it is if they made it to where some of like the Koopathlon Bowser mini games, maybe they scale them down or do something to that to make it four player instead of 20 player based. But who knows, that'd be a cool idea, but will they actually do that? Probably not. And the last type of spaces are the chance time spaces, which again, similar to how they were in Superstars, where it's more or less something that if you really try, you'll be able to time. Then we got a good look at when you wanna actually view the board when you're trying to make a decision on whether you wanna go one way or another. Once you bring it up, it very clearly shows you where everything is, but hopefully, we can actually see everybody use it when we are playing online instead of just only offline. There are two types of shops. You have your yellow shops, which are your, I guess, your normal typical items. Then we have the purple shops, which might be different per board. Hidden blocks are back. The question is, are they going to be similar to how they were in Superstars, where it's just one and then you have a random percentage to get coins or a star? Or did they maybe decide to go back and do something where there's like two hidden blocks, one will have coins, one will have a star? Probably the former, but just figured I'd bring that up. Boo is also back to steal the coins and stars, just like he did in Superstars. And for those that were worried whether it was about the Bowser spaces or about the Boo here, you can use the Boo to steal coins, you can land on a Bowser space as Bowser, I'm sure you can. The reactions and the stickers are back. I do also like how the reactions and the stickers here look design-wise. I wonder if there's a way for us to like unlock a few more or buy some more from a shop or something like that. The double slash lucky slash bonus mini games are back, but here they seem to be happening randomly rather than every five turns. And the final five turn events in this game, you seem to be able to actually choose what happens. The question is, do you always get to choose? Or is it like, a, sometimes you get to choose and then maybe sometimes it's random. But of course, something else to talk about with the final five events is how many of those will there actually be and will there be some that are like board specific? 
maybe there's five to seven ones that you can have that normally show up and then one for each board that can potentially be board specific. That'd be cool, but we don't know the full details yet, so I can't really say much on that. Two more things to mention here that I'll be talking about more in later videos, but just things to bring up. The first one is that the ally system is kind of back. It's not the same as it was in Super, but the allies slash Jamboree buddies, as they are called here, or Jamboree friends, I should say, they are back. They work differently, but the allies will have their own separate video. And some of the hexes from Mario Party DS are also back in this game. But again, we will talk about more about the hexes and certain things for like items in the item video itself. Just want to get those out there because we will be talking about them, but they will be in their own videos. Now let's talk about all the specifics that I was able to find and some obviously things that we've already known for each of the boards. First, we're going to be starting off with Mega Wiggler's Tree Party. The first thing we're going to talk about is that there is a loop at the very beginning of the board with a red Koopa Troopa at the very end of the board to give you 10 coins. There is a wiggler in the middle which will change positions with either a wiggler bell or one of the four event spaces that have bells next to them. Now thanks to Nintendo Life we have an image of wiggler looking pissed off which will then change the spaces on his back from blue spaces to red spaces and lucky spaces to bowser spaces. We don't know how this occurs, but we do know that it does happen. There are two item shops on this board. At the very beginning of the board, there is your quote unquote normal item shop. And in the back right corner, we have the Kamek shop, which holds mostly exclusive items. The two different types of events by the piranha plants on the left and right side of the board start by taking five coins when you land on them. The next person who lands on it will lose six, next person will lose seven, and so on and so forth. Then there's the event in the back with this spike around the top of the board where it has you pick a honeycomb. If it has bees, you'll get nothing. If it has honey, you'll get coins and get to choose again. If you find the second one with honey, you'll get more coins. But if you choose the ones with the bees after that, you'll just keep what you had after you've chosen the first one with honey. The star locations that we kind of learned is that you have one on the left side of the board, you'll have one in the original loop, you'll have two on the path with spike, one on the other path adjacent to the spike one, and then maybe there's going to be like two more. My prediction would probably be like one on the right side of the board. And personally, I hope that there is one on the wiggler. Now we're going to move on to the second board, which seems to be Rollum Raceway. The entire thing is one big loop with two separating pads on each side. Like it was with Mega Wiggler, there is a red Koopa at the very start to give you 10 coins as you pass it. On this board, there seems to be only two star locations on both pads at the top, one on the very top one, and then one on the one beneath it. There is an item shop on the left side of the board. There is a Boo who is on the right side of the board. But the fun things about the item shop, the boo location, and then at least one of the star locations is that if you notice, there are three different types of event spaces that have a red circle around them, a green circle around them, and then a blue circle around them. It looks like if you land on the red event spaces, they will make you go past the item shop and land on the other set of red spaces. If you land on the green ones, it'll jump you past the boo and land on the other green ones. And then if you land on the blue ones, those will jump you back to start. Now on the very top path, it does look like there are two event spaces on there. And my guess based on some of the things that I've seen is that if you land on one of them, there will be a bruiser in a car chasing you past the star location to the blue space right before the event spaces that are the green ones. So that way you have to go all the way back around the board to try to get the star. Now there are two event spaces that are right in front of the like electrical charge thing that's down there on the other side of the start. 
and I don't know what those do. I'll be honest, I'll straight up don't know what they do. Maybe they give you an electrical charge and you can roll an automatic two, three, or four dice. That's about as much as I got. Also, before that, there seems to be like a paratroopa who is running something. And we've seen, I believe, Donkey Kong get a turbo dice from there. So maybe that is like this board's specific item shop where you can get like turbo dice and maybe a couple other things. Or it's just straight up, you'll do something, you'll pay some coins to get turbo dice. Something like that too, maybe, I don't know. But speaking about turbo dice, whenever you actually use the turbo dice, it looks like it'll make it to where you miss every single event, whether it is the start, the boo, any shops. My guess is that it would also make you go past the star without being able to collect it, but we just haven't seen that yet. Up next, we're gonna be talking about Goomba Lagoon. And the first thing is that the tides will seemingly either change randomly or every two to three turns. Because it looks like the tides potentially are able to change on like turn two or three. And then I think I also see them changing on turn six. So in my head, that would either be every two to three turns or it just could be totally random. Also, you can use this board exclusive shell conch item to also change the tides. On this board, there are three different item shops. You have two of your normal item shops, one on the bottom left and one on the top right, with the exclusive one around the top left. The star locations that we were able to see are on the second and third islands. My guess is that maybe there will be about like one on each of the paths near the volcano. Maybe there will be one on the fourth island in the top right. Maybe one on the boat before Boo, and I don't know, maybe one also on like those islands that are between the first island and Lucky Island. Speaking about Lucky Island, the happening spaces on the first and third island will have you glide down a ball to either the Lucky Island or on the third island, the exclusive shop. The question when it comes to these event spaces is whether or not one of them will allow you to go down and one will not allow you to go down or if it just allows you to go down no matter what and the two are there just for a design. The happening space on the second island makes it look like you're gonna be fishing for coins. We have the event spaces on the beaches which look to change the tides. We also have the chest, which will make it to where it'll shuffle four items between all the boxes, with one of them having nothing in it. Just try to follow them all and pick whatever you want. There are two boos on this board. There is one in the top left on the sand, and then there is one on the bottom right on the ship. And then there's Goomba Volcano at the very top, which will shoot out either Golden Goombas or Potaboos. If it shoots out the Golden Goombas, you'll get five coins for each of them that you pass. And if it shoots out the Potaboos, it'll make you lose three coins for each of them that you pass. The only thing that we don't know is whether or not you just walk up to it and activate it, or if you need to maybe spend a little bit of money to activate it or just something else in general. Hey there, Editing Connor here. While going through and editing this video, it looks like stars may actually be able to appear on the lucky spaces in this game. Because if you take a look at this screenshot, it shows that this space here is a lucky space. However, a star can appear here. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to leave where I think certain star locations for all the boards are going to be as they are. But now that I know that, it would not shock me if at least one to two star locations on each of the boards where the star spaces actually move end up potentially on a lucky space. Uh, now that we've had that out of the way, back to the video. Next, we're going to be talking about Rainbow Galleria. If you'll take a notice, the pink escalators will take you up and the blue escalators will take you down. There is a warp pipe elevator right in the center that will take you either from the first to third floor or the third to first floor. There are two questions that I have when it comes to this. Does it cost coins to use, which I think it probably will. And then the other one, which I think is a little bit more important, is can you only use the elevator depending on which floor is lighting up? 
it looks like it starts at the first floor. So does somebody need to take the elevator to the third floor for somebody on the third floor to take it back down to the first? I think that would be an interesting mechanic to kind of keep it a little more interesting. Next, we're going to talk about the flash sales. The question is, are they actually random and when they happen or will they happen every five turns? But of course, when it comes to them, you'll get your stars half off. Maybe the shop, but probably not. But my favorite thing when it comes to the flash sales, and I believe this is when it comes to the flash sales, is it looks like all the different characters will rush into the mall because they got to get their sales. They got to get everything. They got to save money. It's just a nice, cute thing that adds a little bit to it. Now, the star locations, I think we only see one of them here. If I'm mistaken, then I'm sorry. But I think the only one we see is on the top floor left side. My guess is that each floor will probably have two. Maybe the only one that I don't see having two would be the bottom one. And then either the middle and or top floor will have two or three. That would be my guess. There are two shops on this board. You have the normal one, which is on the second floor, and the purple one, which is a one coin shop where you can buy one of either a mushroom, a creepy dice, or a 10 coin steel trap for one coin. You have four stamp locations on this board. One on the first floor, one on the second floor, and then you have two of them on the top floor. Once you get all four of those stamps and go back to the red Koopa kiosk, you will get 50 coins. My question is that if you pass the red Koopa without any stamps or with less than four stamps, will you also get money? Next and last, we're gonna talk about all of the events because apparently there are a ton of events. The first one is a ball gambling thing in the second floor that looks like the Mario Party 4 thing, but this one has Green Toad doing it with you. If you get the white, the green, the red, or the blue ball, you will get coins. If you get the gold ball, you will get a golden pipe. There are two event space shops on the top floor adjacent from each other. It looks like the red shop will have some more rarer items and the gold shop will have like the payday double and triple dices as well as the golden pipe to buy. On the top floor all the way to the left, you have the fourth shop event. Either this will give something to somebody in fourth or you have to be in fourth to land on it and for it to activate. Those are my best guesses until we actually see it. That's all I can say. We also have the boo on the top floor in the back left corner. And then we only see a tiny little look, but all the way on the top right, there is a event there, which looks like it has the similar logo to the mirror item. I wonder if maybe there you can just simply get a mirror item, or maybe it's something if you land on it, Maybe you can warp with somebody else if we think that the mirror item is a true warp. And the last event is the Peepa event, which we saw as like the first thing when it was like flash sale. My guess is that if you do land on it, you might get a boo bell or you might be able to buy a boo bell or something along those lines. That's the best guess that I could give. Now let's move on to the last new board with King Bowser's Keep. The beginning area here is one where you can only get back to it after you have left it with pipes. There are three green pipes at the top of the board. There are two on the top left and one all the way on the top right. There is also a red pipe and I think I know where it goes because if you follow the red pipe in very specific screenshots and parts of the video, it looks like it goes down and then comes up right to the red space before you get to Bowser's Square. So if you were to go into one of the green pipes, it'll probably bring you back to start. If you go into the red pipe, it'll bring you right back to Bowser's Square. There are at least three star locations in that Bowser's Square. 
my guess is that there will probably be three or four star locations behind that area. And this is just a possibility, but I feel like it would make it so much better and so much more useful to want to go and really go to those pipes. And I'm hoping that there is one around that starting area just because I feel like it would be a major race to the pipe. Now, the event spaces that are in the main square will make it to where you can change the direction of which that square is going. So if you're going clockwise, you land on it, it'll make it go counterclockwise and then vice versa. You can also use the lever to reverse the direction of the square as well. There are three shops on this board, two exclusive with one at the start and then one in the back end of the square and then a normal shop all the way on the left side of the board. There are different types of Mecha Koopas around the board. I see a small and a big one. My guess is that you'll roll a dice to do damage to them and then whoever hits them last will get coins. Also, skeleton gates are here, at least one of them. Then there is a purple cog on the left side of the square. It looks like you'll pass it and then you'll either get coins or the ba -bomb. Maybe if you do get the ba -bomb, it'll make you lose either like 10 coins or if they really want to go crazy, half of your coins. Now we've gone long enough talking about the board without, you know, talking about the main mechanic of the board, which looks to be the giant Bowser in the center. It's either he creates Bowser spaces or he creates Bowser spaces and then after he creates them at a later point makes them more dangerous. It's one of those two things. Now there's also like a cage in the top right of the board and it looks like either there are buttons on it or something to do with coins. My best bet is that if there's buttons, it looks like you need to get the right buttons. You need to pick the right ones to enter the cage to be able to get coins or maybe an item or probably not, but maybe a star. Now there's also two bullet bill blasters on the left side of the board, right behind the Bowser Square. My guess is that if you land on either of the events with them, you're gonna get blasted with a bullet bill and lose coins. Then on the right side behind the skeleton gate, it looks like the car from the Bruiser from Roland Raceway is near a dot, but also I believe a crane is. So I don't know if the dot has to do with the crane, with the car, or who knows what it has to do with over there, but that has something to do with some sort of event. And then the last thing that I noticed about the board, I don't see Boo anywhere. Maybe Boo is more in the back in a specific area that I can't fully see perfectly, but I just don't see Boo. So I wonder if Boo is maybe not on this board. But again, could be totally wrong, and there's Boo just somewhere hiding out there that I'm not seeing. Now we're gonna quickly talk about the two boards that are returning, starting with Mario's Rainbow Castle. The board layout is more or less pretty similar to how it was in Mario Party 1. There is only one star location that changes with either the event spaces and maybe also the top of the tower looking item. Also, there is only one shop location, but the main one is out when Toad is out front, but also when Bowser is out front, it looks like it'll change to the exclusive one. The Boo is in the top left of the board like he was in the original. The design of the board has the clouds multi-layered, different colors, and personally, I just like the look of how it all looks comparatively to Mario Party 1. And the last thing when it comes to this board is, will the imposter Bowser take 40 coins like he did in Mario Party 1? If he's not going to do that, I hope that he at least takes like 20 coins. And just to throw it out there, I know it probably won't happen, but maybe they'll make it to where it's something similar to Castaway Bay. And if you have a star, he'll take away a star. Probably not but a man can hope. And the final board to talk about is Western Land. There are a few changes to this board. There is a new path on the bottom left to go towards the middle, 
whereas there were two paths from the middle to go out towards the outside path. There was also another new path at the very end of the board to loop around and or use a skeleton gate that is now at the bottom of the path instead of the top of the path to bring you around again to then go to the shop or the boo. Speaking of the shops, there are three shops. There is the exclusive one that is on the bottom path and there are two normal ones, one in the middle area and then one on the top right. There are two boos on this board. There is one on the left side of the board and one on the right side of the board. Most of the event spaces, unless they are specifically connected to something specific, make it look like once you land on them, the train will move like how it did in Mario Party 2. Now, the big question that I have when it comes to the trains is the two times that we saw the train move, somebody was in the train. In Mario Party 2, when you were in the train, you would hit a block and it would go either forward one station or backwards one station. However, in this, it looks like if you are in the train, there is the possibility, or it always happens potentially, where it will move two stations. Or maybe you get to choose whether you want to go forward or backwards two stations and then you hit the dice. But I know for a fact that in Mario Party 2, it did not move two consecutive stations, either forwards or backwards. And it does here. So I think that could cause a lot more chaos in getting people forced back to the start of the board. And the last thing which we're gonna talk about is that the Hootenanny is now an event space, not something that you pass. So my guess is that you'll choose whether you want to land on the Hootenanny or not. If you land on the Hootenanny, it'll probably automatically bring everybody there. And then if you don't want to do it, you go the other way. So long are the days where you got to pay for your Hootenanny or not pay for your Hootenanny. And here you just land on it and it probably happens. Now let's move on to the mini games. First, we have Lumber Tumble, which has you trying to stay on a few platforms. You're gonna have two sets of logs in front and behind you and you gotta try to stay on and not get pushed off because the logs will vary their speeds, go forwards and sometimes go backwards to kind of throw you off. Next, we have a mini game which is like Toads on Balls. My best guess is that the mini game is gonna be called Big Top Quiz of the names that we've able to see. In this mini game, you're gonna follow and pick the correct responses to the questions. Some will have to do with which toad is hiding which character or which character is on the specific ball. Next, we have a mini game where you have to take a picture that is as close as you can get it to the center picture on your screen. They'll probably divvy up the points five, three, one, and zero per round. Up next, we have Scarousel, where you have to try to stay on the carousel and potentially not get knocked off or go too fast or too slow where you get hit with the electricity. Next, we have a mini game where you're collecting flags. You gotta collect the most amount of them on a globe-like area, and then whoever does get the most will win the mini game. Up next, we have Sandwiched, where you have to avoid the falling sandwiches, and they will get faster and faster as time goes on. Up next, we have Hot Cross Blocks. In this mini game, you need to outsmart your opponents by trying to select blocks that your opponents will not select. But of course, if you wanna to try to make sure that your opponents do not get certain blocks, you can choose them to make them not be able to get them themselves. The next one is Light Wave Battle, where every ground pound that you do will send light waves to everybody else. So you gotta send your own while being able to avoid all of the others that everybody else is sending to you. Then we have Thwomp the Difference. In this mini game, my best guess is that you just have to pick the different thing and the different object that are behind each of the Thwomps. Next, we have Cold Front where you have to balance on the ice and try your best not to get blown off from the Typhoos. As the time goes on, more and more Typhoos will blow to make it more difficult. Next, we have Hot Hot Hop. In this mini game, you're trying to not get hit by the fire bar, which will continuously spin around the platform, or the Magmargs, which are going to randomly go from any direction and try to just get in your way. 
Next, we have Sled to the Edge. This is more or less give me a break from Mario Party 7, but instead of it being an eight player minigame, it's a four player minigame. And instead of it being on random types of terrain, this looks like it will always be on ice. Then we have the Ant Troopers hopping minigame, which I believe is trampoline or trampoline where you gotta bounce on the ant troopers and just make sure that you don't get jumped on to where you're going to hit one of the horned ant troopers or just mistakenly jump on one of them yourself. Then we have a key mini game where it looks like it is locked out from Mario Party 3, but instead of it being where everybody is going up and rushing to get the keys to the doors, it looks like it'll be one player at a time and you got to find which key goes to what door and my assumption it'll be three doors for the first round, two doors for the second round, and then one final door for the last round. Then we have three throw from Mario Party 4. In this minigame, you have basketballs and you got to shoot them into the hoops. My question with this minigame is, is it the same where if you're on the left or right, you have a much higher chance of winning than if you are in the middle? Next, we have Granite Getaway from Mario Party 6. Run away from the giant boulder, all Indiana Jones style, and make sure you don't get tripped up by rocks, and then try to also potentially not fall in any pits as you make your way all the way to the end. Next up, we have Treasure Divers from Mario Party 1. In this minigame, you're diving into the water and trying to bring the chest out into the ship. Big chests are worth five coins, medium chests are worth three coins, and small chests are worth one coin. It looks like there'll be a total of 26 coins total that you'll be able to collect in this minigame. Next, we have Platform Peril from Mario Party 1. However, this version is a coin collecting minigame. Instead of trying to make it all the way to the end to get 10 coins, it looks like you're going to have to go from platform to platform and just collect as many coins as possible. Next, we have Stamp Out from Mario Party 4. You're going to try to get your paint all over the paper as much as you can. Whoever has the highest percentage of paint on by the end of the time limit will win. Next, we have the four player potential motion mini games. And first we have Tilt-A-Golf. In this mini game, you're tilting your joy cons and it looks like you might be able to press a button to bounce your golf balls and you gotta get them into the holes as fast as possible. Next, we have Hammer at Home where it looks like you have to time your hammer hits to hit the nail all the way into the piece of wood. Whereas if you don't time it right, you might miss and then have to do it two or three times. Next up, we have Night Lights, which looks to be in the similar vein to Crank to Rank from Mario Party 8, where it looks like you're going to have to rotate your Joy-Con in a clockwork fashion as fast as you can to light up the night with your color going all the way up to the castle. Up next, we have this organizing minigame, where it looks like you have to tilt your Joy-Con to try to put the cheap cheeps and the bloopers where they need to go in their specific locations. Next up, we have some sort of mini game with amps where it looks like you're trying to avoid them and their electricity and try to make it all the way to the top. Probably like the first one to make it to the top will win. Next up, we have the triathlon mini game. I don't know if we've seen the name of this mini game. If we do, then I'll pop it up on screen. But in this mini game, you're swimming while shaking your Joy-Con in a specific way then you're biking while you're shaking your Joy-Con in a specific way, and then you're leaping over hurdles while shaking to leap over each of the hurdles. First one across wins. And then the final motion minigame looks like some sort of mining minigame, where you're just shaking as fast as you can, trying to make it all the way through like the rocks or the mountain or the hill or whatever it is. And then first one out will win. Now there are three mini games that we don't necessarily have footage of when it comes to Jamboree specifically. The first one is Domination from Mario Party 4. It's just a straight up button masher. Mash as fast as you can and as much as you can in 10 seconds. Next up, we have this ice skating coin mini game where you're gonna be in ice skates and you just gotta collect as many coins as you can. And the last four player mini game is this balancing mini game, which looks to be treetop treasure where you're gonna be balancing on two different platforms with everybody and trying to collect as many coins as you can. Next, we're gonna be moving on to the 1v3s, starting off with Sunset Standoff. In this minigame, one person is in a giant bonsai bill and they have five rounds to try to hit the three people and knock them off. Next up, we have Cookie Cutters, where one person is able to cut out all of the cookie shapes while well, the three will have one each and have to work together to cut out as many of the cookie shapes as possible. 
Next up, we have a UFO mini game where the one person will drop different sizes of spike platforms and the three have to avoid and not get hit by the spikes. Next up, we have some sort of hide and seek mini game where instead of how every other hide and seek mini game in Mario Party has worked where the three have hidden, in here it's actually the one and then the three people will have three rounds probably to hit the person three times. Next up, we have a mini game where the one person hits an on off switch to drop gruels on the three. And just with how everything is looking, it looks like this one will probably favor the three, but I've been wrong before. Next up, we have a bruiser mini game where the one person will control a giant mechanical bruiser and try to hit the three within the time limit. Next up, we have an archery target mini game where the three people will have targets above them with 10, 20, and 30 points. The one player will be shooting arrows from a set platform that will move at a set speed and they will be trying to get at 100 points within the time limit. Next up, we have cage catch where the one person will be swimming in a pool like area and then the three will be trying to catch them with one person controlling the horizontal movement of the cage one person controlling the vertical movement of the cage, and then one person controlling when to actually drop the cage. Next up, we have a Plessy coin collecting mini game where the one player will be on Plessy, looking like they'll be able to move faster and be able to go in front of everybody else to be able to collect coins first, whereas the three will be on smaller rafts and trying to more or less collect the scraps and trying to also potentially not get knocked off by the one while they are using Plessy. Next up, we have Blame It on the Crane. This is a minigame from Mario Party 4. This minigame has the one player in a giant crane and they have to use it to try to collect all the three people that are in giant balls. And then the three are trying to avoid being picked up by the crane while on a spinning platform. It looks like there's a difference in this version where the one player can actually kind of control the crane with their stick. Whereas in Mario Party 4, you had to hold down the A button for it to move. Up next for Mario Party 6, we have Snow Brawl, where each group of people are trying to throw snowballs at each other. The one person has to hit all the three, and then the three people have to hit the one, but the one will have some ukikis to try to block out some of the snowballs. And then the last 1v3 minigame looks like it is Bash and Cash for Mario Party 1, but reversed. In this version of the minigame, the three people have 21 coins among themselves, and then the one person has to go around hitting them with hammers and then however many people they're able to hit within the time limit will be however many coins they have and then however many coins that the three have at the end of the minigame still will be what they win. Now we're going to be moving on to the 2v2 minigames starting off with a rope swinging minigame where I just compare it to Vine with me from Mario Party 3 where you're going to have to go from ledge to ledge and try to grab onto each ledge and then once you grab onto it, your partner will release theirs and then go and grab the next one and you keep going and going all the way till the end. Up next, we have pick and produce. We have to take the three types of fruits and then try to get them onto the specific conveyor belts to get them into their specific boxes. Some of them you have to go all the way from the left all the way to the right and then vice versa. It's a quick one where you gotta really be on your toes trying to get everything into where they need to go. Next, we have Prime Cut, where you're trying to cut three different steaks as close as you can to 50-50. The team that does it most often, the closest, will win. Next up, we have a pattern matching minigame, where each player will have circles that they need to rotate in order to match the pattern that is in the middle by working together. Next up, we have Tricky Turntable, where you'll have 10 seconds to try to mind game your opponent's team to try to get you as many coins as possible. You'll have seven different rounds at 10 seconds apiece, with also the possibility of getting a ba bomb, and if you do get a ba bomb to hit you, you will lose a coin. Next up, we have some sort of treasure lassoing mini game where you're trying to lasso in chests. There are two different sizes. You have small chests, which you can grab by yourself, which will give you probably a coin. And then you have bigger chests, which are looking like they may be five or 10 coins. But in order to get them, you both have to actually lasso them in together. The next mini game we have is Robo Arm Wrestle. This could go either way. I have seen an article that says you have to shake your Joy-Con as fast as you can to do it. 
I was in the understanding and hope that this was a button mashing mini game, but it is looking like this is potentially a Joy-Con specific mini game. So we'll have to see when we actually get the mini game in our own hands. Next up, we have Diffuse or Lose from Mario Party 5. In this mini game, you're trying to get the diffuses out as many times as you can, because as soon as the fuse hits the giant bomb that is at the end, he will explode, making you lose. Then we have Jump the Gun from Mario Party 6. In this minigame, one person is shooting bullet bills onto targets, and then the other teammate is trying to jump on the bullet bills to make it to the end as fast as possible. Now, for the 2v2s, we have two minigames that really do not have any type of footage. There is this card matching minigame where either you're trying to match the cards as fast as possible, or it could be something where you're trying to match what Womp is asking you to match as fast as possible, and then whoever gets the most points in that regard will win. Then we have some sort of car racing minigame. From the minigame names that we could see, my best guess is that this is called Two Axis Taxi. In this minigame, my best guess is that you'll have one person controlling either the front of the car or the back of the car or the left side of the car or the right side of the car and then you have to work together to get through some sort of like obstacle course and then make it to the end as fast as possible. We also have a mini game where you have to get your dory all the way to the end of this course while going around the little obstacles and making it past the giant cheap cheap at the end. Up next, we have dual mini games. The first one we have is some sort of hand slapping mini game where it's basically just mind games. When you ground pound, the hand will slap your opponent, but if your opponent can manage to jump over the hand, it will slap you instead. Then we have some sort of bowling mini game. We have to roll a giant ball down a hill and try to hit as many of the pins as you can. The question that I have for this is, is it one frame or are there multiple frames of this? Next up, we have some sort of fuzzy race mini game where you have to try to get to the top of the thing as fast as you can while avoiding all of the fuzzies as possible. Then we have two mini games that really don't have as much footage or any footage where we have the fishing mini game where I think we saw in like that Yoshi thing that they showed off on Twitter. My best guess is you have to either get the biggest fish or you have to get the most points from the fish. One of those two within a time limit that's as best as I got. Then we have a mini game where you need to run through a bunch of marbles to make it to the end before your opponent. Next up, we have the item mini games. This one we can go through just rather quickly. It looks like you have one where there's probably like a wheel in the middle. It'll spin and then you just got to hit A and then whatever item you get, you get. Then you have a mini game where it looks like you just choose a line and then whatever it goes to, you win the item. Then we have a mini game where it looks like you're just trying to match two cards. There will be five sets of two cards. Whichever one you flip over twice first will be the item that you get. Then it looks like there's some sort of like ball dropping mini game where you drop the ball and whatever like basket it goes into will be the item that you get. And then finally some sort of like ice shuffleboard mini game where you hit the thing as fast as you can or however specific strength. Whatever item it lands on will be the one that you get. Now we have the Jamboree Friend minigames. First up, we have Mario's, which looks like it'll be three different minigames coming back from Mario Party Superstars, and it looks like you'll have to do them in some sort of medley. I don't know the exact order of which you have to do them, but it will probably start out with Leaf Leap on the ground, and then you'll go into the air to do, my best guess would be Bumper Balls, and then you would do Shy Guy Says, and then maybe whoever does the best, and all of them will win Mario. Now we have Luigi's minigame where it has eight to nine different rooms of puzzles. Whether you're sitting there and solving like a three piece puzzle or you're sitting there trying to match certain shapes to certain things or doing Hotel Goomba for a room. You do eight to nine rooms of that and then whoever gets to the end first will get Luigi. You have Daisy's minigame where you go around and collect the most amount of, I'm guessing, like Daisy tokens as possible. You'll have four rounds to do it. Each one will have different areas for you to run around in and do. Next up, we have Yoshi's minigame where you're going to hop on top of a Yoshi and run through a giant obstacle course to get all the way to the end. It looks like there will also be like apples that you can collect to potentially make yourself go faster. Next up, we have Donkey Kong's minigame, 
where it looks like it is basically just Donkey Konga, where you're playing the bongos in the rhythm of the song and the rhythm that he's making you go through. And then whoever has the most points will get Donkey Kong. Next up, we have Bowser Jr.'s, where it looks like something along the lines of like a decathlon, 10 different rounds of things that you'll have to do. And then whoever has the most amount of points by the end of the decathlon will get Bowser Jr. We have Peach's minigame, which has you starting out by bringing as many of the gifts as you can to her in the first round. We have the second round where you and everybody else has to pick the plate of donuts that nobody else is going to pick. The question is, do you get greedy and try to go for the most or do you play it safe and try to go for the lowest? And the final round is you have to go around and pick the exact thing that Peach is asking you to get in order to put it back into your launcher and at the very end it'll shoot out some beautiful fireworks. Up next we have what looks to be Wario's minigame and it looks like it's going to be a giant game show where you're just gonna have to know trivia and be able to guess things correctly. Next up, we have Rosalina's minigame, and this one does look like it is motion control based, which means it will not show up online. But it looks like in this minigame, you're just gonna have to jump off some ramps and then try to use your Joy-Con to tilt in the direction that you need to go. And then most likely whoever ends up finishing the race first would get Rosalina. And the last one that we have seen is Waluigi's Pinball, where it looks like you'll just be playing pinball with a Waluigi theme and you'll be doing it for about three minutes. Now there are five mystery mini games here. Now my best guess for these mini games is that they are potentially boss mini games because we see a mini game where you're jumping on a bee and it looks like in the format of like a boss fight from Mario Party 9 and Mario Party 10. So it looks like to me that there will be five mini games, one for each of the new boards and then maybe it's something for like the end of each board that you play, or maybe it's something for like a story mode. Next, we're gonna be moving on to the eight player co-op mini games. The first one we have is like an apple juice making mini game where three people will go and collect apples, two will make the actual apple juice, and then three more will try to deliver the apple juice to a truck. Next up, we have some sort of like volleyball mini game where everybody's trying to volley all of the balls all the way to the end and then you just gotta get as many as you can all the way to the end as possible. Next up we have a ship or boat target shooting kind of mini game where you have to try to shoot as many of the targets as you can. If you get lines or if you get shapes you get bonus points and then of course if you hit all of them you'll probably get like the maximum amount of points per ship. Next up we have like a fence defending mini game where you gotta sit there and get the bombs away from the fence as much as possible. This one is like Balloon's Tower Defense, but with bombs. Next up, we have a mini game where one person is trying to, I guess, clean as many chain chomps as they can. And then the seven other people are trying to make sure that you have enough stream in your water to actually be able to hit the chain chomps with the water. Next up, we have a mini game where you're just trying to hit a button to match the symbol that is underneath you. If everybody gets it perfectly, you'll get bonus points. Otherwise, it'll just take longer and longer. So just do it as fast as you can and as accurate as you can. Next up, we have an eight player like slide puzzle kind of thing where you got to work together and pass the puzzle to your left and your right and try to make the puzzle as best as you can. Next, we have a mini game where you're just trying to beat Wiggler in a race. It looks like it is basically Desert Dash, but with eight people. That'll be fun. Next up, we have a mini game where you gotta match the direction of the arrow that is pointing. If it points up, you gotta look up. If it points down, you gotta look down. Just try to match your direction with the direction of the arrow. And the last eight player mini game is it looks like you have to take eight pieces that are scattered around and match a nine piece puzzle, work together and get the pieces in the areas that they need to go to. Next up, we have the Coop Athlon mini games. The first one that we have is hammering away at some Monty moles. Some would be normal, some would be gold. And then you'll have some bombs. Just make sure you don't hit the bombs. Next up, we have a mini game where you're trying to break as many blocks as you can. You'll have some paratroopers around. Those will give you some extra shells to hit around, including the red one, which looks like you really want to get that as fast as possible. Next up, we have a mini game where you're cooking bread. You gotta make sure that it cooks all the way through but doesn't burn and then pull it out for coins. Next up, you have the one where you're just trying to avoid spikes rollers. You gotta jump over them, avoid them, and collect as many coins as you can. 
The next one we have is you're just pushing some blocks and some plushes off of the platform. Different ones are worth different points. The next one is like F-Zero or that one mini game or game from like Nintendo land. And you just gotta get as many coins as you can and just go as fast as possible. Next up, we have a mini game that looks like it's one player piece out. Uh, but here you gotta take like the bomb and you gotta put all the blocks of coins around the bomb and make it blow up to get all the coins. The next mini game is a mini game where you gotta pick the room with the most characters present. If you pick the right room, you'll get coins. If not, then you'll just keep passing through and then you'll get nothing and you have to try again the next room. And the last main Koopathlon mini game is a mini game where you're blasting out of cannons and you gotta time your cannon shots as perfectly as you can to get as many coins as you can. Next up, we have five Bowser Koopathlon mini games. The first one, you're jumping over fire to make sure that you're not getting hit. The next one is you're trying to stay on the platform and run away from Bowser. Just try to not get hit by anything that may be falling in the air or by running into one of the couple pits. The next one is a mini game where you're climbing up a pole. My guess is you got to avoid the things that are coming in from the side and then also don't go slow enough to where you'll get hit by the lava rising from beneath you. And the last one that we have footage for is a mini game where you have a bunch of platforms Every single one will be white, and then the ones that change color to like yellow, red, and whatnot, you want to stay off of those because those will drop out from underneath you, and it will get smaller over time. There is one that we do not have footage for, but my best guess based on just looking at it and from talking to a couple people is that there will be something in one of the chests, and then it'll rotate and mix up, and then you got to pick the correct chest and then it'll probably go through a few rounds of that, and then whoever is left at the end will stay alive. And the final type of mini game to talk about today are the rhythm mini games. There is questions for this because, you know, we don't really get to see a lot of the footage for a lot of this just yet. Maybe we will by time that I release this or by time the big video comes out. But the ones that we do see footage for is the first one where you're cutting fruits, you're cutting vegetables and the rhythm. You got one where you're flipping pancakes. You got, you know, I got to flip them at the right times. And then one where you're cooking, I think like chili or something along those lines with Waluigi. Now the ones that we do not have footage for are the ones where it looks like, I don't know, maybe you're baking a cake. There's one where it looks like something along the lines like you maybe have popcorn. There's something that looks like you're making a sandwich, one that looks like you're maybe cooking and making a hamburger, another one which looks like something with a hot dog, or maybe like a foot long from Subway. There's one that looks like you're skewering food, like that one mini game in Super Mario Party. There's also another one which looks like you're maybe like plucking carrots like that one mini game from Mario Party 9, but now maybe it's like a rhythm mini game instead of like a as fast as you can type of mini game. And then there's one mini game that I feel like I can actually kind of see and understand, which looks like you're taking a golf club and hitting the fruit into a giant gelato cup. Now, throughout this video, I have been talking about and trying to guess what mini games are normal mini games and what mini games might be potentially motion mini games. We now have gotten to see which mini games are specifically motion based mini games. So for the four player mini games, it is the seven that I 100% knew and thought were going to be the motion based mini games. For the 1v3 mini games, we have the archery mini game and the riding on the Plessy mini game. For the 2v2s, we have the mini games where you have to go through an obstacle course on a Dory or Plessy the arm wrestling mini game, and then we have the rounding up the chest with your ropes. There is one dual mini game that is motion, and that is a fish reaction mini game. There is one item mini game where it looks like you're gonna have to tilt your Joy-Con to put the ball into the specific place that you want it to be. And then there is one Jamboree friend mini game that is motion, and that is Rosalina's. So don't expect to see Rosalina online when it comes to seeing her for Jamboree friends. So all in all, for those that were wondering how many of these mini games we will be actually able to play in the main boards themselves, we will have 22 four player mini games, 
10 1v3 minigames, 9 2v2, 4 duel, 4 item, and 9 jamboree friend minigames, which in total gets us to 58. Now let's talk about the jamboree friends. When the jamboree friends appear, it looks like you will have 3 turns to get to them. Once you do get to them, everybody will play a mini game and then the winner will get that friend. However, the person who actually makes it to the Jamboree friend will get some sort of advantage in each of the mini games. After the mini game, you will then get the Jamboree friend for a maximum of three turns. It can be less because if anybody else passes you while you have the Jamboree friend, they will steal them from you. For those that are worried, I would assume that the timer on those three turns would not reset if the Jamboree friend gets stolen. So if somebody gets them on turn six, then most likely by the end of turn nine, that would be the latest that I would expect the Jamboree friend to go away. Now, each Jamboree friend has their own abilities. These abilities will probably be either something that you can do before you take your turn right after you roll or passively that will just happen there are six of the jamboree friend abilities that we know about first we have mario's which it looks like after you roll mario will then roll a three to eight dice to add on top of your roll so if you have mario the minimum that you could have is a four and the maximum that you could have is an 18. With Luigi, it looks like you have just higher odds of rolling higher on your dice. With Daisy, it looks like all of the items in all of the shops will be half off. With DKs, it looks like you'll be able to teleport to a random space each turn. Hopefully, it's something that you can actually pick and it doesn't force you to do. Yoshi's ability is that he is able to copy a random item from the first person that you pass. Whether or not it's only the first person that you pass the entire time that you have them, or the first person that you pass in a given turn, that I don't know. And then we have Waluigi's, where Waluigi will steal three to eight coins from each person that you pass with him while he is your Jamboree friend. Now, we need to talk about how it looks to be that there are only 10 Jamboree friends. We do not know if anyone else other than the 10 people that I have mentioned can be Jamboree friends. And if they are, will they have some similar mini games or show up in some of the mini games as other people? Because the one thing that personally that is kind of disappointing to me about this, if it is just the way that it is, is I like using a decent amount of these characters. So if I want to use these characters, I'm basically saying that those mini games, if I really enjoy them, like I like using Daisy. If let's say Daisy's is my favorite, then I can't use Daisy. Otherwise that mini game won't show up. So my hope is that one of a few things, either A, like Daisy's can also be like Toadettes or Birdos or Paulines, you know, something along those lines, right? And this way, each mini game gets to be used at least twice for each of the characters. Or if the game knows which characters are not going to be part of like the, the rotation of two or three Jamboree friends that you get in each game, where every other mini game that would not normally show up in that very specific game could show up in the roulette as well. Now, another thing when it comes to the Jamboree friends is once you have them, everything is able to be done twice. If you land on a blue space, you will get six coins instead of three. If you land on a red space, you will lose six coins instead of three. Now, if it's the final five turns of the game, you will lose 12 coins on a red space instead of six, and then blue, you will gain 12 instead of six. We got to see where somebody landed on a Bowser space and after they landed on the Bowser space because they had a Jamboree friend with them, that after they rolled and took the punishment for the first spin, Bowser brought them right back in and they had to spin again. So especially if we are in the second half of the game, there is the chance that you could go in Bowser, lose a star, get dragged right back in and lose another. So again, it just begs the question, when it comes to this, 
how deep does it go where everything happens twice? And since Bowser worked the way that it did, does that mean if you land on chance time, you have to do chance time twice? If you land on an item, do you get two items? And if you land on a lucky space, do you get to do the roulette of that twice? Same goes with the unlucky space. I can say I'm intrigued to find out. Next, let's talk about the modes. To start off, we should talk about the main Mario Party mode since it's most likely the main mode that we'll all be playing in the game. You have your generic play with four people, run around one of the seven boards, getting coins and playing mini games to get as many stars as you can to win the game. With now having allies show up similar to Super, but different in its own regard. But now we have a new way to play Mario Party with the pro rules. In this mode, every single game will be set to 12 turns, no more, no less. There will only be one bonus start to get with it looking like it'll only be either one of the Sightseer, Eventful, or Slowpoke bonuses. Before you start though, it'll tell you exactly which one you'll be trying to go for. Also, before you start playing, you'll get to choose one item to take into the board with you with the options being either the Mushroom, Creepy Dice, Pipe, Chomp Call, Warp Box, Cellular Shopper, 10 coin steel trap or the skeleton key which that one only appears on specific boards. The spaces also have some differences in them from the normal mode. The lucky space will always give you either 10 coins or a double dice with you being able to choose. The unlucky space will always have you give 7 coins to last place. The bowser space will always make you lose 1 star. There will be no chance time spaces in this mode and the item spaces will not have any item mini games and the items will be determined randomly. When it comes to the shops, all of the items will be limited in stock. Each item can only be sold twice, and if there are multiple shops of the same variety, then the stock is shared between them. The star stop locations should be able to be seen with them being fixed. Now, does that mean that they aren't fixed for the normal mode? And the only way that they won't go into the fixed locations would be if either the star has already been there before going through an entire rotation, if somebody is standing on it, or if a jamboree buddy is standing on that space. Now, if you use Boo and steal coins, it'll always be 15 coins that he steals, and there won't be any changes when it comes to stealing stars. Those will stay as 50 coins to take one. There won't be any hidden blocks showing up in this mode, so I'd assume no hidden block cards as well. In this mode, you'll be forced to vote for which of the three mini games that you see that you want to play, and then from there, it'll randomly choose from everybody's votes. You can also do mini games this way in the normal Mario Party mode, but in this mode, the mini games that have the obvious luck elements will not show up. In the final five turns, there won't be any special events to happen, but the red and blue spaces will go from three coins to six coins, and if you land on the same space as somebody else, you will duel. Finally, if both people have a star when it comes to dueling, they will be able to duel each other for said stars. Next, we have the three other online modes that we have known for a while being Koopathalon, Bowser Kaboom Squad, and Minigame Bay. With Koopathalon, you'll be playing three of ten Koopathalon minigames, and after you play the three, you'll play a Bowser Koopathalon minigame, and if you fall or you lose it, you'll be sent back a specific amount of spaces coinciding with when you fell off or when you lost. But in this mode, you're going to collect as many coins as you can in those three mini games, and the amount that you collect will be the amount of spaces that you move on the board. The first person to do five total laps will win. This is a mode that you can play with either random people or with up to eight friends online. With Bowser Kaboom Squad, you'll work together in a team of eight to bring bombs into cannons to shoot down the imposter Bowser. You'll have five 90 second rounds to do this with an eight player minigame taking place after each of probably the first four rounds. Depending on how you do in those minigames, you'll probably get either some okay items to some of the better items in this mode to choose from to help make your odds of beating the imposter Bowser easier and quicker. After you defeat him, you're going to mash your way at the end to fully get rid of him. Now, I heard in one video that apparently they were playing on an easy mode for this. So it may be where this mode has multiple difficulties, like an easy, a normal, and a hard. Also, just like with Koopathalon, you can play this mode with either eight friends or with random people online. Finally, we have the mode that I would personally bet of these three that would be played most offline with Minigame Bay. 
Here you'll have five different ways of playing the minigames, starting with your normal free play where you can choose which minigame to play and in whatever order you choose to do so. From here, it looks like we have three modes returning from Mario Party Superstars, being the survival mode where you play minigames and get as many wins as you can in a row, the 2v2 team battles where you just play 2v2s against people from around the world, and the daily minigames where you play a group of three minigames based off of differing themes. There's also a new mode where you'll play specifically the Jamboree Buddy minigames. Now, this is fully speculation on my part, but we have seen in the back of the island some rocks that have been both blocking and not blocking some sort of entrance. So it totally could be just designs, but there is the possibility of a sixth mode here that they either do not want to show off or talk about yet, or they may be waiting for us to discover and play it ourselves. Now let's move on to the offline only modes, first starting with the ones that require your Joy-Cons first. The first mode is Paratroopa Flight School, where you'll use your Joy-Cons to fly around the one area in three different modes. The first mode is where you're going to be playing by yourself, more or less to just get used to the area itself and explore until your heart's content. Then you have a mode where you and a friend will work together to bring other characters to their desired location and try not to drop them along the way. Then you have a mode where you can go against a friend to collect the most amount of Parabitty Buds within what looks to be a 90 second time limit. Next we have Toad's Item Factory where you'll have 30 different levels of working together to get a ball from one warp pipe to the other by rotating, shaking, or turning your Joy-Cons in the ways that you need to to be able to continue and complete each level. We don't know as of yet whether you have to play this with four people or if it's something that you can play with maybe AIs or potentially controlling everything by yourself. The final of these modes is Rhythm Kitchen. These are similar to the rhythm minigames from Super Mario Party, however, all of these are now food themed. The one thing that's uncertain about this is how many you actually play per round, whereas in Super, it was always specified as three. But hey, I am always down to play some rhythm minigames, even if it's by myself. We do have one final mode to go over that we know of as for now, and that is the single player mode that seems to be akin to Mario Party Advance. In this new single player mode, you'll be going around the five new boards in a free roaming fashion, doing tasks for other characters, like buying and bringing a crate from the shop to a toad, and finding some firewood for a shy guy. You will also have mini games that you can play to win and get mini stars, as well as the tasks that were previously mentioned. You'll have to go around and get 30 of them to complete the board. Now, once you reach those 30 mini stars, the aura of the imposter Bowser will come down onto the screen, and I believe now is where we finally see where the boss mini games, like the B one that we know of, truly come into play. Since there were only five of those mystery mini games, and in this mode we can only play on the five new boards, I think we have a match made here. Finally, we'll talk about the other little things of this game that aren't specifically modes, but do add to the experience. First off, in the normal Mario Party modes, all of the UI and the reactions are on the bottom of the screen and shift around depending on whose turn it is. This is probably the best way to do this, especially with the reactions, so that way they don't take up a good amount of the screen with how it was in Superstars, since in there, it was all four of the corners. While well, also with this, every turn you'll see the minigame symbol at the end of everybody, and from time to time you'll see other symbols that are specific to boards or turns like the home stretch, the tides rising and lowering in Goomba Lagoon, the flash sail in Rainbow Galleria, Bowser taking a turn in King Bowser's Keep, and maybe some others that we do not know of just yet. We also learn that there are a total of 109 reactions in the game, with probably 66 of them being specifically for the playable characters, which would mean 3 each, and 43 of them that could be used by every single player. 
You can also create your own card that can be shared online that you can buy stickers to put on each using party points. But the thing that I wonder about the party points is will they only be used for things like the stickers and maybe the backgrounds of these cards? Or will they be used for maybe some music stuff? Or maybe this is where you'll be able to get like the two unlockable characters. I don't know, but hey, it's thoughts to be had. There is one other thing that I do feel like I need to mention, and it is about how to unlock all the three unlockable boards. The first board you're going to be unlocking is Western Land, where you have to reach the Silver Player Rank. The second board that you're going to be unlocking is Mario's Rainbow Castle, where you'll have to reach the Gold Player Rank. And the final board that you'll be unlocking is King Bowser's Keep, where you'll have to reach the Diamond Player Rank. Now my guess when it comes to these player ranks is it's gonna work where basically whatever you do will build into this rank. I don't necessarily think it's an online only thing or an offline only thing. I just think that it's so long as you're actually playing the game, playing the modes, whether online or offline, you'll get points to go towards this rank. Just like if you were playing online or offline in Mario Party Superstars, you always got to keep the coins of all of the games and finally let's talk about the items starting at three coins you can either get a mushroom which will add five spaces to the total of your roll or you can get the creepy dice which allows you to make one person roll one through three however i'm pretty sure if they have some sort of movement based item they can cancel it out for four coins, you can get the green warp pipe, which allows you to warp to a random space on the board. You could warp very close to the star, or you could warp one space behind where you were. For five coins, you can get the double dice, which allows you to roll two dice. The super creepy dice, which allows you to make everybody roll one through three for a turn. Maybe the same thing with the creepy dice, where if somebody has some movement based item, they can just cancel it out. The Wiggler Bell, which on Mega Wiggler's Tree Party is that exclusive board item, which allows you to make the Wiggler change the positions that he is in in the middle. And we have the Markup Sticker, which allows you to probably pick one person, and that person's next turn will cost double for them for both either items and or stars. For six coins, you can get the Shop Hop Box, which allows you to warp to a random shop that's on the board. The Mushroom Ticket, which I'll be 100% honest, I'm not too sure exactly what it does, but my best guess is that maybe you can use them or save them for something that involves mushrooms. Or you can get the Chop Call, which will just change the location of the star. For seven coins, you can get the Dueling Glove, which allows you to pick one person to duel for coins, or the Warp Box, which allows you to warp to one random player. For 10 coins, you can either get the Triple Dice, which allows you to roll three dice, or you can get the Payday Double Dice, which will allow you to roll two dice. However, you both move the number of spaces that you roll and get the number of coins that you roll. For 12 coins, you can either get the Custom Dice, which allows you to choose your roll from 1 to 10, or you can get the Turbo Dice, which is exclusive to Rollem Raceway, which allows you to roll four dice. However, you will pass everything that is in your path. We have the Boo Bell, which is 15 coins, which will allow you to choose a person to either steal coins from or a star from, if you have 50 coins. Or you can get the Payday Triple Dice, which will allow you to roll three dice, but same with Payday Double Dice. You'll move the number of spaces that you roll and get the number of coins that you roll. And the last one that we truly know the price of is the Golden Pipe, which is 25 coins, and that will allow you to warp to the star. Now we're going to move on to the items that we haven't necessarily seen in True Shops, but the first one that we're going to talk about we have seen in the One Coin Shop, which is inside Rainbow Galleria, and that is the 10 coin steel trap. This item you're gonna be putting on a space, and then if another player lands on it, you'll get 10 of their coins. Now, we also have a few other steel traps. We have the half coin steel trap, which will basically the same thing, you put on a space, and if another player lands on it, instead here, you'll get half of their coins. And then we have a one star steel trap, which if somebody lands on the trap that you have laid down, you will get one of their stars. Next, we're gonna be talking about the mirror. Now, this could do one of two things. 
Either it's going to be like the old warp block where you just swap positions with another player, or maybe it's you bring a random player to your space, more or less how that mirror was in King Boo's Haunted Hideaway in Mario Party 8. Then we have the golden mirror, which if it works like one of the first two things that I said before, maybe here you get to choose who you swap positions with, or you get to choose who you bring to your space. After this, we have a bunch of returning items, starting with the hidden block card, where you just use it and you'll get a hidden block. Either you get coins or you get a star. Then we have the skeleton key, where it's a key and you use it on the skeleton gates to access specific areas that you normally wouldn't be able to access. Next, we have the plunder chest, which if it works how it works before, you pick a person and then it will take a random item from that person. Then we have the Cellular Shopper, which if it does work like how it works in Mario Party 3, then you'll probably get to choose which of the two types of shops to call, and then you'll be able to buy an item from that shop. Next up, we have the Bowser Phone, and if it works like how it works in Mario Party 3, you get to choose who you want to force to have to call Bowser, but there is the possibility that It'll just be you call Bowser and then he'll just pick a random person to pick on. Next up, we have the Tide Shell from Goomba Lagoon and you use it to change the tides either from high or low on that board. Then we have some sort of lever from King Bowser's Keep. You use this lever to change the direction of that square that is around Bowser on that board and make it either clockwise or counterclockwise. Next up, we have some sort of tower item from Mario's Rainbow Castle. My best guess is that you'll use it and it will change whether or not Toad is out in front or Bowser's out in front, which then after you do that, will also determine whether you have the Koopa shop out in front or the Kamek shop out in front. Next, my best guess for what the exclusive item for Western Land could be is a train ticket where maybe if you have this train ticket, this is what allows you to move two stations forwards or backwards if you ride the train. That, or you just need it to ride the train in general. And the final item that we know of that is its own item is some sort of green dueling glove. Maybe this is the way to duel for stars in the normal Mario Party mode, or maybe this is a way to duel for items or something, who knows? But it will be interesting to find out. However, we do have two more, I guess, types of items. The first one is the item bag. It will fill up your inventory slots with random items. My guess is that it will probably be only in lucky spaces like it was in Superstars. And then we have whatever lodestones are. The question I have with this, is it truly an item? But it will probably just fill up your item slots with these and you'll probably have to use them to be able to get other items in your slots. Now, if the lodestones are truly an item, that would mean we only have one more item that we do not know. If it's not an item, then that would mean that there are two items that we do not know. The hope for the reverse mushroom still stands in play. Well, that has been the items video. Like I said earlier, in three days, I will be putting all of these videos together in one giant video, and then I will be putting pieces together to make sure that everything is as accurate as it can be. Once that video comes out though, I am not looking at another thing of this game until I play it myself. So be warned, don't spoil me, all I ask. Either way, thank y'all for watching.